Anakin. I gave you a choice. Live. Or die. There's hope for you yet. Anakin's words still reeled in Ahsoka's mind as she laid back in the cockpit of her T61974. The calls of the Pergil and her ship vibrated from time to time, providing a kind of ambience to the long journey. Sabine had made the choice to betray their mission by offering Balin Skull the map. Had she not done so, they would have not been in this situation in the first place. Ahsoka had felt a sense of disappointment in her apprentice, but the recent vision from Anakin assured her that she should overlook this mistake. Ezra was alive somewhere, but so was Thrawn. But the biggest question within Ahsoka's mind was did Sabine make the right choice? Morgan Elsbeth had succeeded as the Eye of Scion surged forward through the vast expanse of space toward the distant galaxy housing Thrawn's planet, a sense of exhilaration pulsed through her veins. The thought of her master's imminent pride in her accomplishments loomed like a beacon of validation. Yet she knew, deep down, that her motives stretched far beyond a mere act of rescue. Amidst the anticipation, Balin's skull and his young apprentice, Shin Hadi, stood alongside her on the deck their gazes fixed upon the mesmerizing swirls of blue hyperspace tunnel that enveloped the ship. As Balin's mind wandered, the enigmatic figure of Thrawn occupied his thoughts, igniting a curiosity about the renowned Grand Admiral and the distant galaxy that held his dominion. Eager to unearth the truth and satiate his longing for knowledge, Balin's thoughts drifted toward the mysteries that awaited them. Then there was Sabine Wren, who grappled with her consequences. Regret gnawed at her, an unrelenting reminder of her perceived failure in entrusting Balin with the map. Uncertainty loomed over the fate of Ahsoka, fueling a storm of conflicting emotions within Sabine. Though resentment towards Balin simmered within her, it was overshadowed by a deep sense of self-blame, threatening to engulf her entirely. The Eye of Scion, a colossal starship brimming with anticipation, completed its arduous journey, finally arriving at the mysterious planet of Peridia, the fabled homeworld of the elusive Dathomiri. Balin, his mind rife with curiosity and anticipation, pondered the implications of their impending encounter as they neared the planet and the looming Dathomiri Tower. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by the revered Great Mothers, whose ancient wisdom and power filled the air. Morgan Elsbeth and her party were praised for their relentless efforts, the words carrying an air of profound understanding and respect. As if heralding an omen, the darkened figure of Thrawn's modified Star Destroyer, the Chimera, appeared in the distance. Its sinister silhouette, a blend of somber gray and striking gold accents, hinted at the forbidden forces at Thrawn's command, perhaps granted by the mysterious Night Sisters. The ship docked above the spire, and Thrawn, flanked by stormtroopers with patched golden armor, descended slowly to meet the group. His presence radiated an air of calculated power and menace. What was first just a dream has become a frightening reality for those who may oppose us. Great Mothers, I salute you. Soon this exile will see to an end, thanks to the efforts of Morgan Elspeth. The cargo transfer was secure. Thrawn was introduced to Balin and his apprentice, but he was intrigued by the presence of their prisoner. Sabine Wren. Thrawn, where is Ezra? Ezra? Ah, yes. Wait a minute. Thrawn was thrown off guard, but then smiled. A selfish gamble. The desire to be reunited with your long-lost friend. 
How that singular focus will reshape our galaxy. Just answer the question. Very well. You will be satisfied to know that he is here, Sabine Wren. What? As you have helped me, I will honor your agreement. Enoch, take Sabine Wren to her cell. Sort things out for her. Sabine was pulled away by Thrawn's right-hand man, Enoch, as Thrawn debriefed himself with Balin and Morgan Elsbeth. Thrawn would honor Balin's contract. Shin Hadi found herself intrigued by Thrawn, a man of great power, while Balin seemed rather focused on other matters. Sabine struggled against Enoch, feeling that she had been betrayed by Balin regardless. Deep within the Chimera, Sabine was led into a small holding cell by Enoch. The masked trooper locked the door behind them and began to release Sabine from her binders. What are you doing? Enoch didn't respond. He freed her wrists, but she dared not move them. If you're not going to let me see Ezra, at least say so. You don't have to keep me in suspense. Just get it- Sabine cut herself off as Enoch removed his mask, revealing a familiar face, one she hadn't seen in ten long years. The two parallel scars on his cheek were unmistakable. Ezra? It sure took you long enough. Sabine was speechless for a moment, first shocked, then confused. Well, you didn't exactly make it easy for me to find you. I don't understand. You're working with Thrawn? Yeah. I couldn't believe it myself at first. But it was the only way to survive out here. Thrawn may be cold and ruthless. But he's reasonable. We made it work. Still, he's done so much harm to us. I don't like it either. But like I said, it was the only way to survive. Survive what? This other galaxy. There are so many strange species out here. And the force feels so different. There are threats out here that know about our galaxy, and want to conquer it. Yeah, you're working with one. You don't understand. Thrawn's people have been fighting them for decades now, deep in the unknown regions. They sent Thrawn to the Empire to try and gain an ally. Thrawn thought the only way the galaxy would be strong enough to fight them would be under the Empire. That's why he fought our rebellion. He thought it was for the greater good. And how do you know Thrawn isn't lying? I've seen them. We've only been able to survive this long with me leading the fight against them. Trust me, Sabine. They're out there, and we have to stop them. I do trust you. It's just a lot to take in. Where's Ahsoka? I asked her to come and find me too. Sabine paused before breaking the bad news to Ezra. She's dead. Those mercenaries working for Elspeth, Jedi, Inquisitor, whatever they are. They killed her on Cetos, where we jumped here from. She wanted to destroy the map we used to get here. She's... What? Why? She'd do anything to keep Thrawn from returning. Even if it meant leaving you for dead out here. Obviously, I didn't agree. You made the right choice. I can't believe she'd be so heartless. The two lingered on Ahsoka's death for a moment. Ezra turned his head away, then smiled at Sabine. But where is she? Really? What? Ahsoka. She's dead. I just told you, they threw her off a cliff into the ocean. So, you don't know. She is alive. The Night Sisters and I have both foreseen her arrival. Ahsoka has fooled you just like she did everyone else on Seatos. 
Sabine was shocked. How could Ahsoka be alive? And why would she have faked her death? How could she be coming when Sabine saw Balin destroy the map? How could Sabine bear to face her after failing like that? The questions were dizzying, and no answer satisfied her. I can't believe it. How are we going to explain all this to her? Explain? <laughs> We're not going to explain it to her. What? You said it yourself. She'll do anything to keep Thrawn from returning. Even at my expense. Even at yours. She can't be reasoned with. You and I are the only people who can stop her. You remember how to fly a TIE fighter? Wait, hold on a minute. I think you're overreacting. We can reason with Ahsoka. We can explain it to her. We don't have to kill her. How are you going to explain this to her? It's not like she's just going to land and knock on the front door. She'll attack as soon as possible. We can send her a transmission, can't we? Right, yeah, the transmission coming from the Chimera saying that this is all a big misunderstanding. She'll assume we're being made to say that. Face it, Sabine. This is the only way. No, no. There's got to be another way. We can't kill her. We could just, uh, disable her ship or something. Let's just talk about this first, okay? Look. Sabine, if you're not up to it, you can stay here. I can take her myself. What? No! I won't let you kill her! I- As Sabine leapt up to stop Ezra from leaving, he quickly outstretched his arm and knocked her back against the wall with a force push. He held her there. Then I can't let you stop me. I'm sorry, Sabine. Enoch kept Sabine pressed up against the back wall of the cell as she screamed at him to stop. He left the cell, locking Sabine inside, helpless. Sabine fell to the cold metal floor. A realization dawned on her. A realization she hadn't once in those ten long years of exile considered. A realization she should have made the moment she saw Ezra in that armor. Ezra wasn't the lost boy she met all those years ago. He wasn't that brave Jedi who sacrificed himself like his master. He was something new now. Ezra had changed, and Sabine didn't know him anymore. Sabine desperately fought back against the tears welling in her eyes. She beat the cell door with all her might, but she knew what was about to happen. She was powerless to stop it. Meanwhile, Atop the Dathomiri Tower where the Chimera was being prepared for launch, Thrawn was approached by Balin Skull and Shin Hadi. The Dark Jedi Master explained his spiritual calling to the Peridian Wilderness and requested Thrawn provide him and his apprentice the means to explore the planet's surface. Thrawn agreed to give them two of the Howlers his troops had tamed, but warned them that if they did not return quickly, the Chimera would take off without them. Shin was uncomfortable with the prospect of being left behind on such a barren planet, and told her master she was reluctant to go. Balin explained that while the planet may appear barren physically, it was strong in the Force. It gave the Great Mothers their power. There was more to be found there if Shin stopped focusing on the deceptions of her eyes and instead searched through the Force. Shin was willing to try, and soon after, they left the Chimera and the ancient Dathomiri Tower on their steeds. Hours felt like they went by before Sabine heard footsteps come down the Chimera cell block hallway. Thrawn's straightened figure appeared with his guard as they carried some rations as Sabine trembled with anger. I trust your accommodations were satisfactory. I wanted to speak with you. Thrawn, what did you do to him? I understand he isn't what you expected to find at the end of your journey. But you should understand that your old comrade has not been harmed in any way. While we may have been adversaries, this purgatory has taught me the value of granting even my enemies due process. 
Why let Bridger's skills and expertise go to waste, when it would be much more prudent for him to work alongside me? You've brainwashed him! You monster! If you insist, the Great Mothers have a strong persuasive power. They've shown Bridger the error of his ways. Captain Enoch has proven quite adept in commanding my new guard. I wanted you to observe his new position. Perhaps even join us. What's done is done. Now we must simply wait. And I do eagerly await the arrival of Commander Tano. I am genuinely intrigued to see how this unfolds. She'll stop you. So you believe. Until our next meeting, Lady Wren. Thrawn turned and withdrew, accompanied by his guards, leaving Sabine to vent her frustration. Her anger and aggression surged. Thrawn's smugness irked her deeply. The notion that he might hold even the slightest advantage over them for reasons unknown. With Ezra gone, the entire journey was coming to a failure. She breathed heavily, her breath echoing through the metallic prison as she punched the wall, bruising her hands against its cold surface. Sabine regretted the punches almost immediately, holding back tears as the pain throbbed in her knuckles. Her mind was swirling in darkness, and a thought emerged. She began punching the door repeatedly, pounding her fists until they became bloody and yelling that she'd hurt herself. After a few more moments of this, The cell door was opened by a night trooper, who immediately kicked her to the floor of the cell. They brandished a pair of binders before stepping inside. Sabine knew she had to act fast. She scrambled into a sit-up, then thrust her hands at the night trooper. Her mind focused on the pain of the kick on her chest. The night trooper flew back against the metal wall. She remembered how pointless she felt when Enoch held her against the wall here. Now, she had the power. It felt good. She could almost imagine the golden mask he wore on the trooper's helmet. Keeping her hand steady, she removed their blaster and shot them. Now she had to escape the Chimera. Meanwhile in orbit, a pod of Pergils appeared out of hyperspace. In one of these Pergils sat Ahsoka's T-6 shuttle. She and Professor Huang could hear the muffled thumps from within the Pergil's belly and she could sense the other Pergils crying out in pain and horror outside. Flying out to investigate, they found Thrawn had laid a minefield for the Pergils to prevent them from approaching the planet. Ahsoka's piloting skills were put to the test as they flew through the dangerous minefield. The younger Pergils jumped away to search for the Kluzon 36 elsewhere. The older ones were not so lucky. Luckily, the T-6 was much nimbler than the Gravitic Mines, and was able to escape the minefield relatively unscathed. Then, they were chased by mercenary fighters launched from the looming Eye of Scion into the Peridian Rings. In the large meeting room in the Dathomiri Tower, Thrawn spoke to Enoch via hologram. Enoch confirmed to Thrawn that Ahsoka had escaped the minefield as he predicted. Thrawn ordered the mercenaries away to conserve resources and tasked Enoch with finding Ahsoka flushing her out and preventing her from reaching the planet's surface. Enoch launched a TIE Defender prototype aboard the Chimera and flew up into orbit, positioning himself in the ring's shadow. Huang was unable to scan the surface for Sabine due to the heavy interference of the ring system. Ahsoka decided to reach out for Sabine through the Force instead. She closed her eyes and relaxed, her mind leaving the cockpit and sensing the life and change around her. She called out to Sabine, but she couldn't feel her presence. Instead, she felt cold. She felt fear, anger, hate. She locked eyes with her hunter. Ezra. Ahsoka's mind reeled from the revelation and shock. Ezra was alive, but there was something wrong with him. A splinter of the dark side in his mind's eye. Swiftly, renewed fire came on Ahsoka's T-6 shuttle from the Eye of Sion, the coordinates of it having been supplied by Enoch. The professor took the controls and maneuvered the T-6 out of the ring field and dived for the surface. 
Ahsoka collected herself in time for the T6 to be followed by Enoch's nimble and powerful TIE Defender. While Ahsoka attempted to avoid his blaster fire, Enoch was able to knock out the T6's engines and force a landing. He then returned to the Chimera, which would be more than capable of defending itself against an attack by the downed former Jedi, if she even survived in time at all. Elsewhere, in the Peridian Wilderness, Skull and Hadi watched the T6 crash behind a hill and the shrieking TIE Defender pass overhead. Stopping for a moment, Hadi again voiced her impatience with her master's quest and her wish to return to the Chimera and Thrawn. Balin conceded that her ambition lied along a different path than his, but warned that her impatience for victory would guarantee defeat. Shin nodded, not fully understanding her former master's words. She rode off into the distance, while Balin headed in the direction of the crash. Ahsoka and Huang assessed the damage. While the T-6 was repairable, there wasn't enough time for Ahsoka and Huang to fix it and save Sabine from her captors, wherever they were. Ahsoka ordered the ancient droid to work on the T-6 while she began her search. Ahsoka hadn't gone far when she encountered Balin's skull. This scene plays out just like in the show, except the T-6 is down. Ahsoka steals the Howler anyway. Enoch returned to the Chimera and was immediately struck with another vision. He was quick to warn Thrawn. Thrawn noted that the Chimera was practically finished loading and he'd be needed on the bridge soon anyway. The Great Mothers followed, leaving Enoch alone in the tower, lying in wait for his prey. Shin arrived at the base of the tower first and rushed to join Thrawn on the Chimera. There, she pledged her allegiance to him in exchange for power in his new empire. Thrawn accepted her allegiance, silently glad that he had her loyalty rather than the mere tactical alliance he had with the Great Mothers, and through them, Captain Enoch. A sweaty, adrenaline-filled Sabine snuck into the cargo-filled landing bay. She didn't know why, but she knew Thrawn would be back in the tower. She was certain something was calling her there. She darted between the crates, hiding from the patrolling night troopers until she eventually made it to the roof of the Black Granite Fortress. She was about to congratulate herself on her success when she heard the bridge to the Chimera retract behind her. She turned around to see that it was already too far to jump back. Inside the cargo bay, the helmets of all the night troopers were turned back toward her. They'd known she was there all along. This had been anticipated and she'd been guided carefully back to where she couldn't do any more harm. She turned back around again and saw Enoch opposite her. She felt sick. Don't make me do this. Enoch looked at her coldly. Don't you realize what Thrawn's doing? He's leaving you behind, making us fight. Enoch looked down for a moment and rubbed his head. Aboard the Chimera, the Great Mothers were chanting, slowly and rhythmically. Below, Ahsoka could hear the sounds of the Chimera unmooring and rushed into the ancient fortress. Back on top of the tower, Enoch snapped out of his confusion. I'm sorry it came to this, Sabine, but this is the only way. Please, no. I don't want to fight you. Don't worry. I'll go easy on you. With your lack of skill with the Force, it's only fair that I don't use it. Please, Ezra. I just want you back. I don't care about going home anymore. I just want you. I'm flattered, but you don't really mean all that much to me. You can surrender to me now. Something in Sabine snapped. She realized that Ezra... Enoch, whoever he was, hadn't come here to fight her. It wasn't about her at all. He was there to fight Ahsoka, with her as a hostage, one she was sure Ahsoka would have no trouble sacrificing to win. Her anger boiled over, and she charged at the man she loved with no intent other than to kill. Enoch pulled his blaster on her, knocking her to the ground with a blaster shot to her chestplate. She grunted, then took out her stolen blaster to return fire. She shot once, then twice, then three times, but Enoch dodged her every time. Exasperated, she threw the blaster aside and caught her breath before trying again. 
Enoch waited patiently, toying with her. Sabine charged again, this time anticipating Enoch's blast and sliding to the ground. She used her gauntlet to rope up Enoch's blaster and rip it from him. <laughs> All right, hand to hand. Why not? He readied his fists as Sabine readied hers. They circled around each other, waiting to make their move. Without taking their focus off each other, the Chimera rose up around them and began to fly away. Then, cued by an unseen force, they launched into combat. Ahsoka caught her breath for a moment as she scaled the well-worn steps of the tower. Huang contacted her, saying the T-6 had been fixed and was on its way towards the structure the Chimera had just launched from. She watched the Chimera lumber up into the clouds from one of the windows. She felt turmoil still above her. She had to keep moving. Sabine's fist met Enoch's face as she frothed at the mouth. Her jaw ached from his last jab and her legs still hurt from a kick. Her whole body ached, but her mind willed to do more. She beat Enoch bloody for an ounce of comeuppance. Enoch smacked her to the ground where she quickly grabbed one of the dropped E-11s. She raced it up at Enoch, but she couldn't quite pull the trigger. Her finger was stopped in the trigger guard by the force. Play fair. She got to her feet, but Enoch held up his hand in front of him. Enough. She's here. Enoch's hand closed into a fist, an invisible replica tightening around Sabine's neck. He raised her into the air just as Ahsoka arrived at the tip of the tower. Ezra, let her go. Enoch turned to watch the Chimera disappear into the clouds, just as he had predicted. Enoch reached into his pocket, pulling out a hollow transmitter, which promptly activated the image of Grand Admiral Thrawn, Shin Hadi at his side. Thrawn. Ahsoka Tano. I regret we haven't met face to face, and perhaps now we never shall. Still, I know you, because I knew your master. One wonders just how similar you might become. Sabine thrashed in the air, annoying Enoch. She managed to hold onto the E-11 as she was raised up, something he hadn't noticed, but Ahsoka did. With all these years in exile, I had plenty of time to plan for your assault. I knew you and your ward, Lady Wren, were coming. I'll admit my plans evolved as you arrived. But they all ended at this moment. Ahsoka silently pleaded with Sabine through the force to shoot Enoch. Sabine raised her blaster but could not find any will left within herself to fire. She was fading in and out of consciousness from Enoch's strangling, and her arm fell limp by her side. The rifle clattered to the ground. The three of you, right here. If you do nothing, Enoch will kill your ward, and you will have to fight him. You could attack him now, but he will battle you to the death either way. You may save your ward, but you would brand yourself the cold-blooded killer of her beloved Ezra. And we both know she would do anything to stop you from killing him once freed from his grasp. Enoch again put his head in his hands, the dissonance between him and Ezra growing sharper. Each piece poised against the others. Sacrifice is inevitable. Whatever your choice, today victory is mine. Long live the Empire. The hologram shimmered away, leaving the three alone. Sabine had regained consciousness and pleaded with her eyes for Ahsoka not to kill Ezra. Ahsoka considered her options, staring intently into Enoch's eyes. In the end, it was rather simple moral calculus. Ahsoka dashed forward, slashing Enoch across the stomach with her Shoto blade. Ezra and Sabine fell to the ground at the same time. Sabine wailed at Ezra's loss, rushing over to his body. 
His neck was already cold by the time she got there. Ahsoka stayed standing, unable to look at her handiwork. Her eyes instead gazed upward, where even through the thick clouds, she could see the flash of the docked chimera and the Eye of Scion leaving them behind. She could hear the sound of the closing T6 in the distance, right next to the muffled sobs of Sabine as she cradled Ezra in her arms. Ahsoka knew Sabine would never forgive her. Her mind lost to the dark side, just as Enoch's was. Sabine stared at her with yellow, hate-filled eyes. Anakin Skywalker's eyes fell upon the sorrowful sight, and he couldn't help but shake his head. <laughs> 